Welcome to a tale of innovation, tragedy, and the end of an era. I'm Mr. Minutes, and today I'll be floating you through the infamous Hindenburg disaster. This is Extra Minutes, where we inflate your knowledge of history's most pivotal moments. So, hold on to your hydrogen, and let's soar back to May 6, 1937. Picture this. It's the golden age of airship travel. Massive zeppelins cruise through the skies, offering luxury and speed that puts those landbound trains to shame. The pride of Nazi Germany's fleet is the LZ-129 Hindenburg, a behemoth stretching nearly 804 feet long. That's almost four times the length of a Boeing 747. The Hindenburg wasn't just big, it was the Ritz-Carlton of the skies. We're talking about a passenger lounge with a baby grand piano, a dining room serving gourmet meals, and even a smoking room. Yes, a smoking room on a hydrogen-filled balloon. What could possibly go wrong? On May 3rd, 1937, the Hindenburg left Frankfurt, Germany, on its first transatlantic crossing of the season. After a three-day journey across the Atlantic, it approached its destination, the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in New Jersey. Now let's set the scene. It's 7.25 p.m. The weather's been lousy, with rain and wind delaying the landing. Newsreel cameras are rolling, ready to capture the routine arrival of this magnificent flying machine. But fate had other plans. As the Hindenburg attempts to dock, something goes horribly wrong. Eyewitnesses report seeing a small flame near the tail. Within seconds, the entire airship is engulfed in a massive fireball. The scene is apocalyptic, a 800-foot-long inferno descending from the sky. On board, passengers and crew face a nightmare. Some jump from windows, others scramble down the hull as it nears the ground. On the ground, ground crew run towards the blazing wreckage, risking their lives to save survivors. The whole disaster unfolds in a mere 32 seconds. When it's over, 36 people are dead, 13 passengers, 22 crew members, and one ground worker. Miraculously, 62 of the 97 people on board survive. But the real victim here is an entire industry. The age of the airship effectively ends in those flames. Public confidence in Zeppelin travel is shattered, and within a year, commercial Zeppelin travel is done. Now let's talk about the aftermath. The disaster is front-page news worldwide. Radio reporter Herbert Morrison's emotional broadcast becomes legendary. Oh, the humanity, he cries, his voice cracking as he witnesses the horror. But what caused the disaster? That's where things get interesting. Initial investigations pointed to sabotage. Remember, this was Nazi Germany's pride and joy, landing in America just before World War II. Others blamed a lightning strike. The most accepted theory today involves the airship's skin. The Hindenburg's outer covering was made of cotton cloth doped with a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum impregnated cellulose acetate butyrate. Try saying that five times fast. This covering was highly flammable and could be ignited by an electrical discharge. Here's where it gets really wild. Some modern theories suggest the disaster was caused by thermite, a combination of aluminum powder and iron oxide. Sound familiar? That's right, the very materials used in the airship's skin. The idea is that the electrical charge ignited these materials, creating a thermite reaction that burned hot enough to ignite the hydrogen. The Hindenburg disaster had far-reaching consequences. It not only ended the airship era, but also changed how we report news. It was one of the first disasters captured on film, marking a shift towards more immediate visual news reporting. So what do you think? Was it sabotage, a cruel twist of fate, or a design flaw waiting to happen? And how might air travel be different today if the disaster had never occurred? Drop a comment below and let's discuss this fiery piece of aviation history. This has been Mr. Minutes, bringing you extra minutes on the Hindenburg disaster. Remember, History isn't just about the triumphs, it's also about the tragedies that shape our future. Like and subscribe for more deep dives into history's most fascinating chapters. And the next time you complain about airplane food or leg room, just remember, at least your flight isn't filled with highly flammable gas. Safe travels, everyone.